The application that we're going to migrate from Docker Compose to Kubernetes is a piece of open source software called Telform. It's basically an alternative to Google Forms or Typeform or something like that. So it gives you a really nice interface to create a variety of forms. And then it's got features for analytics and managing the answers to the forms and all that kind of stuff. This project already has a Docker Compose file. If we take a look at that, we can get a quick overview of the different components here. So we have a Redis instance, we have MongoDB, we have the Telform app itself, and then we have a service called Web, which is basically Nginx that's sitting in front of the Telform app. So the first thing I wanna do is see if I can get this running locally on my machine with Docker Compose, just to make sure there's no surprises. So I clone the project, Do Docker Compose up to bring it up. Man, I saw some errors there, but maybe that's fine. Okay, cool. And here it is. I already poked around at the docs a little bit, so I know that the username is root and the password is also root. And yeah, now we have the software. We can create a form called whatever, add a new field to the form, etc. I'm not gonna to go too deep into how the actual software works. We're more interested in the process of moving it to Coop. All right, so flipping over to the Docker Compose file again now locally. One thing that we could do is go through this chunk by chunk and create the Kubernetes equivalents and write manifests for them manually and that kind of thing. What I'm gonna do instead though, to get a proof of concept running, is use this really cool tool called Compose which will take this Docker Compose file and turn it into Kubernetes manifests. So let's see what that looks like. Compose, convert, Docker, compose, and we'll call the output kube manifests. Oops. Okay. And now we're going to have a file here called kube manifests. So you can see what it's done is generate a bunch of kube manifests. Um, it looks like we have about close to 200 lines worth, which is notably longer than the Docker compose file, which was uh, about 50 lines. Um, let's just try running it and see what happens before going through all the details of what happened here. So I'm working on a Mac. I have Kubernetes running on top of Docker for Mac. What I'm gonna do is kubectl apply dash F kube manifests. And okay, looks like we've created a couple services, a few deployments and a persistent volume claim. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is take a look at the pods and see if these are running as expected. And the first obvious problem here is that these two bottom pods, Telform and Web, are stuck in image pull back off. Let's take a look at what that's all about. In the Docker Compose file, we are actually building the images locally for those two. And by passing in this context key, rather than pulling the image from a registry like Docker Hub, I spent a little bit of time playing around with this before I started rolling on the video. So I know that the image that's in the public registry is actually different than the one that's being built locally. So I'm not gonna uncomment this and, and use the one in the public registry because I'm not sure that that's going to actually work. Um, what I'm gonna do instead is, and this is just to get it running locally, we're gonna have to change this eventually, but for those two images, Telform and Web, what I'm gonna do is add an image pull policy of never. And I'm also gonna change the image name so that it properly references the images that are already built locally on my machine because of the fact that I did it through Docker Compose a minute ago. And I know that by doing, by doing Docker images, uh, grep, Telform, and you can see they're called Telform Web and Telform Telform. All right, let's go back and apply the manifest again. 
Of course, I spelled it wrong. Need to use capitalization. Okay, cool. So let's go back to looking at the pods. So far, so good. It says it's running. Let's try hitting it at localhost. Okay, and we're not seeing anything. So let's take a look at what the story is with the kube services. So get services. Okay, so we see Telform and web, but web has no external IP. So it actually, so web is Nginx and that's where we want to make the request from our browser. Um, but there's no external IP. So on Docker for Mac, if I make the service the type load balancer, then it will expose the service to my local machine. Let's find the, let's find the web service. Here it is. And let's give it type load balancer. We'll update that. Then let's take a look at the services again. Now, web is being exposed on localhost. So let's try hitting localhost again. It's not quite doing what we want, right? We're not seeing a response. So let's take a look in the logs here. Actually, the first thing that I'm gonna do before even looking in the logs, I'm gonna see if it's possible for us to hit the Telform pod directly. And the Telform pod is listening on port 5000. So we're just going to map our local machines port 5000 to 5000 in the container. And let's try visiting that. Okay, that doesn't seem to be doing what we had hoped. So let's take a look at the logs in that pod and see what's going on. Okay, so there's a bunch of potential problems here, right? No such file or directory, .env. Unable to find logging file configuration. Deprecation warning, could not connect to Mongo. Again, I already played around with this a little bit before I started rolling the film. And the real problem here is that we're unable to connect to Mongo. The other ones are kind of just noise. So Mongo could not connect to this IP and this port, um, 27017. Uh, let's take a look at the configuration around this. Let's take a look at Mongo. So here's our Mongo deployment and persistent volume claim backing it up. So here is the Telform deployment. This is like the pod that we're taking a look at right now. And there's an environment variable, MongoDB URI, which is passing in a URI for the application to find Mongo. Um, I think this is our problem. So this identifier that made sense with Docker Compose no longer makes sense. And, and actually, um, let's take a look at if we have a service for Mongo. I don't think that we do. This is the, up here is the Telform service and down here is the web slash Nginx service. So I think that what we actually need here is we need to create a service for Mongo so that we have a stable way to reference it from the other service. So let's do that. Compose did this as a list. I'm gonna just create a separate YAML document. So we're adding a new service, we're calling it Mongo. And what it's gonna do is um, it's going to select based on the label that's on that deployment that was tacked on there by Compose. If we search for that io.compose.service equals Mongo, then yeah, we see it over here as well. We're putting up a service that's going to target the pods of that deployment. And then the next thing we're gonna do Back over here, where we pass in a reference to Mongo, we're gonna use the conventions put in place by the Kubernetes service discovery stuff to, to find Mongo. So it's just gonna be Mongo 27017. Okay, cool. Let's try applying that. And take a look at the pods. So we have a new pod running. Let's look at the logs there. 
And it's still complaining about things, but it is not complaining about being unable to connect to Mongo. So that seems promising. Let's go back and try localhost again. Okay, great. And let's see if we can log in. Perfect. Let's take a look at this and get a rough idea of what exactly the Compose tool did. It generated a bunch of Kubernetes manifests. This is a service for Telform. So what it did was it created a service for each one of the Docker Compose services that publishes ports. So that's the Telform one and the Web Nginx one. You'll see over here that there are two services, Telform and Web. We also want a service for Mongo, so we wrote that one ourselves. On each of the Kubernetes objects, Compose put some annotations to indicate where it came from. And it also added some labels. In the Docker Compose file, we see that the Mongo service made use of a volume. And for that reason, the Compose tool created a persistent volume claim that would be referenced by the Mongo deployment. And as you can see, each one of the Docker Compose services got compiled to a Kubernetes deployment. Our starting point Docker Compose file was relatively simple, and so the resulting kube manifests were also pretty simple. But if you're starting from a totally busted situation with the Docker Compose file, the Compose tool is not going to magically be able to write reasonable kube manifests. They're also going to be super busted and doing whack stuff. Using this tool Compose is a really neat way to quickly port something over from Docker Compose to Kubernetes manifests and get a taste of what kind of problems you're going to run into next. So we've been able to get a proof of concept up and running really quickly, but we actually have a bunch of things that are busted. For example, there's still several errors in the main application logs, and I assume that the application doesn't work 100% at this time. It's just running at a kind of basic level. We're also running two stateful services now inside of Kubernetes, MongoDB and Redis, and we would probably want to think about doing those as stateful sets or even not running those in cluster and instead modifying things and just passing in a string to an externally managed service or something like that. Using Compose is a really neat way to quickly get something up and running and get a sense of kind of the shape of what this is going to be like in Kubernetes. And then you can take those manifests that it generated and iterate on each piece individually, or even just use it as kind of an idea and throw it away and start over from scratch with a better sense of what you have coming.